here with Country Diggers. I thought I'd do a little history on Aladdin Industries and their lamps since I found one. Now, I know this is not a whole one, but this used to be a uh, Lincoln bust drape. And it was an oil lamp. And on it is Aladdin Industries. And it's from Nashville, Tennessee. So I thought I'd do a bit of history on it. Okay, that's the back side, the Lincoln drape. And I'll tell you a little bit about Aladdin Industries and their lamps. All right, I All will right, be reading tuned. from JD's Realty and Auction.com. Aladdin Lamps, a brief history of Aladdin Industries. A need for better lighting. <clears throat> Prior to the invention, and widespread use of electric lighting in homes across America, life was illuminated by candlelight and lamps fueled with well oil. Well oil was not only not very bright burning, but also was smelly and due to it not being very clean, burning was dirty and left soot marks not only on the chimney, but on the ceilings and surrounding um, in whatever rooms it was used in. The danger associated with the whaling industry, coupled with the declining population of whales and the growing need for more oil, leads to the search for a better burning, more abundantly sourced oil. Kerosene oil was discovered by Canadian physician Abraham Gessner in the late 1840s. Excuse me. Originally sourced from coal tar and shell oils, kerosene was later derived from petroleum. After the first oil well was drilled in Pennsylvania in 1859, the Aladdin Mantle Lamp Company of America. Midwestern salesman Victor S. Johnson founded and incorporated the Western Lighting Company in Minneapolis, Minnesota in 1907. After seeing the superior light produced by a German kerosene mantle burner called the Praetorius Practicus, Practicus, Johnson decided to form his own company. <clears throat> Having studied in poorly lit rooms as a child, Johnson immediately recognized a need for better lighting. Johnson also saw the potential for sales, particularly in rural areas where electricity was still many years from widespread adoption. His company obtained the rights to sell the Practicus mantle burner and other foreign-made lamp parts. Less than a year later, Johnson moved his company to Chicago, where he incorporated the Mantle Company of America in February of, eight, of 1908, fine-tuning a bright light. When properly adjusted, the Practicus burner produced a white light with an output equivalent of about 60 candles. This mantle burner was designed to fit into most American-made fronts, fonts, excuse me, but it required constant attention because it often went out of alignment and chimneys were susceptible to cracking. Johnson began searching for a better version. After acquiring the center draft burner patented by Charles E. Worth, Rith, W-I-R-T-H, and manufactured by Plume and Atwood, Johnson soon introduced the first Aladdin lamp in 1909. The name Aladdin was inspired by the famous folktale Arabian Nights in which a genie is found residing in an oil, old oil lamp. Because it was so much more efficient than other lamps on the market. 
Initial sales of the Aladdin lamp exceeded all expectations. Johnson then established a small research department to improve quality and continue advancement. Continued advancement. The early days of Aladdin manufacturing. The first Aladdin lamp model came with several variations to choose from. Three table lamps, two hanging lamps, a wall-mounted lamp, and an oil pot lamp. Lamp shades were made of glass while mantles and chimneys were imported from Germany. But the company soon began contracting independent glass companies to produce their own hardware at their own in-house manufacturing facility. After introducing Aladdin models, one and two with cap mantles that set on cone-shaped openings on the galleries, Johnson and his team received the first patent for a cone cap, K-O-N-E-K-A-P, cone cap, mantle, cone cap mantle design that made it much easier to operate the lamp. Electrification and Marketing Long before World War I, Johnson recognized the importance of marketing to the company's success and overall growth. Frequently advertised in newspaper periodicals, the radio and movie theater pre-shows. The company also began forming partnerships with retailers. The sixth model won a gold medal at the Panama Pacific International Exhibition in 1915. Due to the partnership with Plume and Atwood, the Aladdin brand was no longer dependent on the engineering and technology of just a few companies in Germany. Due to Germany's role in World War I, German lamp parts became unavailable in America. As electrification processed, Johnson decided to open an international office and formed Aladdin Industries in 1919. By 1926, Johnson had purchased a glass manufacturing company in order to gain full control over manufacturing. Impacts of World War II. World War II played a significant role in the history of Aladdin lamps. As the war effort intensified, electric lamps were temporarily discontinued by 1943. Aladdin was granted permission to use copper by, by the War Production Board because the use of Aladdin kerosene lamps reduced the need for copper wire to electrify homes. Oh, excuse me. Victor S. Johnson died suddenly in 1943, and his son took over the company after being discharged from the Army in 1945. Four years later, Johnson relocated the Aladdin headquarters from Chicago to Nashville. So I think, I think my Aladdin lamp top part, you know, I think it's from Nashville. It's from Nashville. But I think it's like um, 19, you see, he, he moved the Aladdin company to Nashville when he was discharged from the Army in 45. He moved it four years later, so that means it's uh, 45, 46, 47, 48, about 1949 then. So mine's probably 1949 to uh, 1950s, something like that. Anyway, decline and revitalization. As the years went by, domestic sales of kerosene lamps began to decline, and electric lighting made kerosene and oil lamps particularly obsolete, or practically obsolete. Aladdin's electric lamp production ceased as of 1956, but the kerosene lamps gained 
a resurgent of renewed interest throughout the 1960s and 70s. In 1973, an electric uh, collector organization known as the Aladdin Knights was formed in an effort to collect and preserve memorabilia. By 1977, all manufacturing had been moved to Hong Kong. In 1999, Aladdin Industries sold the lamp division to collector investors who named their company Aladdin Mantle Lamp, Lamp Company, located in Clarksville, Tennessee. By 2014, some of the partners running the Aladdin Mantle Lamp, Lamp Company were ready to retire, and the company was sold to Lehman's at the end of 2014 and beginning of 2015. The Aladdin Mantle Lamp Company became part of the Crown Place Brands division of Lehman's. In early 2015, the company assets were transferred from Tennessee to Dalton, Ohio. Okay, well, that was that was a pretty neat history of Aladdin lamps. Hope you all enjoyed. See you back soon.